We welcome everyone to the Paintbrush Paint Tribute BRL 500 here at Daytona, the start of season three. And yes, I am broadcasting. And the reason why I'm broadcasting is because I just DNF. It was lovely. We are currently about 37 laps in, I believe is the current running. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this series and this race. So let's get you up front to the lead. Back in Black has led most of the laps here in the series so far with his teammate and Michael right behind him. And they are taking off one, two in the series so far. The chat is up. If you are feeling chatty, come chat with me here in the booth. In any case, they are kind of pulling on the leaders here on your screen. You'll get a chance to see them on the running order on your screen there. We're on lap 39 of 100, almost halfway VRL 500. We have already had uh, two DNFs. Uh, I'm sorry, it seems to be a third DNF. You know, Rudy Roar has DNF as well. So we started with about 13 cars. And now we're down to what we have left here early in this one. Running third place on the grid is Woozy. Woozy Emu in the 45 is running third, and he is getting those valuable points. He is a hot seat driver, by the way, but uh, well, not really because he's filling in those spots. So he is an official part of the series. As he's being passed there by the one of Beloved. Beloved car in the one. His teammate just DNF'd and he's trying to take third place on the grid in that Menards number one CMR Chevrolet. That peak and a freeze on that car as well. We go down the line, fifth place, Dale Jr. And Dale having a pretty good run so far in that 88 Chevrolet. He's about to be passed by the next group and that is Frosty. And being led by little Habibi, those two are taking that position away. That is the battle for six. Dale Jr. falls in line. And then last on that totem pole, Josh. And he's getting his run. Let's go back up, up front and look at this. Michael in second. And uh, just off a of field run here. And so looking good at field. And there they go. One, two on the grid. And these two have been virtually inseparable throughout this race so far. We do have an official pace car. He has got a, field, a, a run so far with one caution. Looking at another one. So... And uh, with the field kind of spread out and slim as we enter season three, normally it is uh, the case where these series, these leagues, um, BRL start off kind of slow as far as attendance. Watch next week, we'll have a full field, but these two taking full advantage of nine and the 22 back in black, trying to take advantage of the absence of Ghost Train as well as Skitty Brave both absent in this race. Chris the God absent in this race. And as a result, he's trying to take advantage of a good starting spot on the pole and being able to have a chance to win. As you see, no contact between bumpers here, but running real close together. We'll keep an eye on them as they continue to pull away with their chemistry.
And let's go to next on the grid, Habibi marching up through the field with his newfound teammate in Frosty Dale Jr. trying to hang on. Beloved seems to have an issue. Beloved in third now. The question is, are they going to pick Beloved up uh, with them as they run to the front, or are they going to try to pass Beloved, who it looks to be a little bit under speed? Dell Jr. doing a good job hanging in there. Let's see what happens. Beloved moves up the racetrack, so it could be that he's going to let these guys by. He does, and he's going to try to tag in on the bottom. Not exactly what I'd have done. I would have made those guys tag in with me. But let's see if he's able to hang with it as he drops to the tail end of this field. So he drops from third to six on the grid outside of the top five. We'll see if he's able to get back up there. Let's ride along with Frosty in the 23, making his return to BRL. And is getting pushed hard or is pushing hard by pushing the 48 pretty hard. Sorry, I'm still recovering from that concussion I got in that wreck earlier. And there you see this gap between them. That's not good. It's not a good thing when you see that gap. And the reason why is because these cars in the package were running this season so draft dependent. When you see that separation, uh, know that they're not getting top speed which means that uh, it makes it pretty difficult to hunt down the, the top two drivers who are together and getting that top speed. So keep an eye on them and that. up front with the leaders one two and still pushing as they have a mean pace around Daytona there's the question these guys are teammates with uh, ECE a newly formed team there were a team last season they're a team this season now back in black was unable to run a lot last season due to uh, situations that came up with him now he's trying to run full time, he's trying to take advantage of this situation. It's a newly formed team. How good will they be against 484 and against 6545 and against CMR coming up this season? We'll keep an eye on ECE, the rookie in, in Michael, the experienced vet in Back in Black, and what they're going to be able to accomplish. Right now they look pretty promising, but as this season wears through, and wears on, what will they be able to accomplish? We'll keep our eyes on them. Who's gonna score the first win of the season? You go back here to Little BB, and Little BB didn't get off to the hottest start, really was in question as to whether he was gonna be able to run or not. We figure out he's able to run, hops in the car, gets into an official spot. Now here's the question. Will he be able to get on that pace and that tear that he was on last season when he was winning all of those races. Will he be able to avenge the non-showing, the, the short, the, I don't know how to describe, the, the, the failings of last season's Final Four. He's got Frosty pushing him. His teammate and champion in Ghost Train is not here. And it's going to have to make up some points and some time next season. So team points are going to be valuable. He can't afford to have anything happen to him in this race. Keep an eye on what's going on. Frosty is with him. Dale Jr., a longtime veteran in KMR, decides to return to BRL. First start. He's in the top five. Looking really, really good. He's a single car team. As we have a car slow on the racetrack, that looks like the 45 let's see if he's okay he's got some damage wonder what happened there 
as you see the one car has the dart to out to get out of the way to outmaneuver what is going on with him and more importantly will that be a caution as Josh the best is coming up on him there's it's not clear as to whether that's going to be a caution or what happened to him I see drivers let's see he's slowing down trying to get past Woozy let's see if the leaders are under caution here because I don't know what happened they are under caution it is a caution don't know what happened there but whatever happened blew out the caution and that is quite interesting Well, a chance to pit here. As we are 51 of 100, so a lap over halfway. Remember that one lap 100 will be white flag. Let's look at the running order so far. Back in black, Habibi, Frosty, Junior, Beloved, Michael, who dropped from the top spot all the way back there, who's the who brings out the pass or brings out the back. Um, no car a lap down except for I believe Woozy pit road should be open this time. As you see, drivers darting down pit road. Woozy's going to go and get that lap back. He's not going to pit, which is a very interesting call with damage. We'll see how and why is they stack on up in pit road <laughs> drivers on top of each other who's going to end up where let's see who wins the battle off of pit road it is it's little habibi wins the battle off of pit road frosty appears to be third Back in black second. This is a game changer, ladies and gentlemen. This is a huge game changer. So one of the big questions I have is what happened to Michael, who was last we checked was running up there with back in black. Could have been the cause of our caution. We'll keep an eye on that developing story as they double file on the back straight away. This is going to be a very interesting restart. Little Habibi, some kind of way every time he finds his way onto um, a good position. Look at Dale Jr. sitting for. Let's ride along here. Let, let's, uh, Let's ride along here. There we go. And let's see. Let's ride along here with Frosty. You know what? Let's go. Let's ride along here with Beloved and see what we can see from the one car. How this restart's going to go. Pace car is in. We get ready to go green. Third restart of the night. Green flags in the air. We're racing again here at Daytona. Paint brush. Paints tribute. 500. They saw a excellent restart for Habibi and Frosty. Back in black decides to go back into the pack to get Michael. Dale Jr. slips from fourth to sixth. And Josh staying out of everyone's way right now. We still got a lot of racing to go. 
here at Daytona. Unlike many series, this series, the first race here at Daytona starts under the lights. The day race will be ran as the first race of the final four round. And this is because BRL is just a little bit different than most leagues. Beloved slipped high. He's got to stay down in line in order to have a good run. Beloved giving up those spots early may come back to haunt him. He's got to be aggressive. Now's the time to do that. Let's get back on board. We're back in black because him, him and Michael had such a good run. The question is, will they be able to get past this group here some of the best racing we've had all night here's the 48 to block the high lane he's gonna jump up high it's three cars up high two cars down low here comes the 48 back down using that side draft to keep the nine in that group up at bay it would be smart now for the one and the 88 to team up and get back up to the front while these guys are side by side taking the air off of each other the 48 getting that good run frosty having trouble staying with the 48 this could pose a problem the 48 first lap slip he went from thinking he wasn't going to make the race to now racing in the race and looking back in black hungry to try to get the lap get the lead back frosty drops the fourth Now, Habibi's got to hold off both the 9 and the 22. In the meantime, the 23 of Frosty's got to figure out a way to get back to the bumper. There you go. Bumper used. Contact made. 48 and 9. Remember, these guys have a lot of history dating back to season one of BRL in the qualifying race. These guys went back and forth at Homestead. And now, again, these guys going back and forth, trading paint. 48 getting a good run now all of these guys pitted so they've got about 30 laps of fuel before they're gonna have to consider pitting again so something to think about here back in black now this is the first time he's had to really face some competitive traffic here what is he doing? What is he going to do to set himself up? The 48 doing a good job of blocking, anticipating those runs, doing everything he can to stay up here. And the reason why he's got to be so aggressive, look at how far the 23 is off the back of this top group. Look at that gap that's between them right now. That means the 48 essentially is by himself. So you got two teammates working with each other. And then Frosty, who was helping the 48, is now far off the pace. Now it seems like he's able to catch and suck right back up to that group. Now the question is, will he be able to get past and help the 48 highs is gonna work out? We're gonna have to keep a close eye on the, how this battle develops. There they go, 48 blocking again, nine blocking. Nine's gotta be careful. These guys have to be careful. They could end their day early as they go back and forth with each other. Every time he gets that run, the 48 does such a good job anticipating, but he might have missed and tipped. Piss oh, it's a spin to 22. 22 has spun the nine. And I'm sure the caution is gonna fly as he's in the middle of the racetrack. Has minor transmission damage beside that. That's it. Woozy Emu able to get by. Caution flag flies as our pace car comes out. Wow. And this is exactly what we talked about. And really what happened was because Habibi was checking up so much, causing the field to check up so much, the nine had to check up as he hit the bumper of the 48, he had to check up. The 22 did not react in time and his teammate got spun. So as they drive around to meet the pace car for our fourth caution, things are definitely starting to heat up out there on the racetrack.
I am sure pit road will probably be open this time around. As you see contact between 48 and the pace car. Let's look at our running order really quickly. You'll see it at the top of your screen as well. Habibi in first. Frosty is going to sit there in second in the number 23. Third place is going to be Michael in the 22. After Michael's beloved car, fourth place in that one. Dale Jr. riding the grass. He's in 88. In the 88. And he sits fifth place top five. Josh is going to be able to move up. He's going to be able to be more relative now. Let's see if he's more aggressive. He's 6'6". Seventh place is going to be Woozy Emu, who thought he wouldn't be able to race in the series. Welcome back, Woozy Emu in the 45, having a good run so far, sitting seventh. Back in black, our recent caution is going to sit eighth. Pit road is open this time, we notice, and we got some takers. Beloved Dale, Josh, Michael, all in pit road. Back out there to Habibi is the lead and behind him the 22 and then behind him the three, which I think is an excellent, does not the three, the 45, which I think is an excellent move by Woozy Emu to stay out on a racetrack and get up there. Let's see how aggressive he is to stay up there and be a player. It looks like Michael wins the battle off of pit road. He rejoins the field as they prepare to double up. There are no cars a lap down. As we see the cautions are starting to flow in now. And that's the thing about Daytona you can always count on. The race kind of starts off slow and methodical. But you can count on the fact that by the end of the race, these cautions are going to start breeding more cautions. It doesn't matter how many cars you got on the track. They're going to start racing very, very tight and very, very hard to get that first win of the season and that first playoff berth advance to the next round. One site we're used to seeing little Habibi in first, back in black in eighth this time without help. Let's see exactly how this goes. We're gonna ride along with Michael. Pay close attention to this restart as the pace car is warming those tires as he prepares to dart down pit road there he goes remember brl series restarts at the line here we go green flag look at back in black trying to take advantage oh we got contact and slam in the wall beloved is hard in the wall and the 88 And the caution flies as all these guys have damage. And that was some aggressive moves by, um, by Back in Black to try to get back up there at the expense of all of these cars that were involved in that wreck. Back under caution yet again. Now let's see. We will get a chance to talk to today as they got to meet the pace car, so pit road will be closed. And let's see if we can chat with. chat with um, I think they finally got got the uh, fact they got to catch up with the pace car now um let's talk with back in black or excuse me Josh best 
in the 18. Rose open this time. We see all the damage drivers coming down pit road, repairing that damage. The back half of the field. There's Josh. Josh, be sure to include your audio, man. This is Sam Cook in the booth. You got a copy. Well, um, notice you've been staying out of everybody's way. Uh, how are things progressing on the track? And I'm pretty sure things have gotten a lot tenser than uh, the opening laps, haven't they? How many laps you have to go? It should be about 65, right? Should be right. Okay, so we wish you the best out there, and we'll see if you can get that uh, draft issue taken care of. We'll keep our eye on you for the rest of the race. Yep. That was Josh, the best game in the number 18 uh, Toyota or JBG Racing, and we'll see if he's able to get that 18 under control. You heard that uh, things have spiced up a little bit, as we've expected in a race like this. We're going to see if anything changes. There's Beloved rejoining the field. That wreck hurt Beloved more than anyone. He did have a top spot. Let's see if he can get back up through the field and try and uh, make something happen with this top group. Now, let's get back to the action. Habibi, Frosty, 1-2, Michael, back in black, 3-4. This has been kind of the classic battle for this season. Team versus team, green flag, and there you see the nine getting that jump, times it just right. Three wide. Files right in behind Black and Black. Oh, little Habibi. And Frosty in fourth. Let's see if he can keep up with it. Beloved making moves. He goes to fifth place in that CMR Chevrolet. There you see him. And Dale making those two moves. Frosty starting to get separated once again, so it's clear. These two in the middle, the class of the field. Habibi trying to hold those guys back. Frosty trying to hang on. Let's see what we have here. Let's go up front with Habibi, who we're used to seeing up front last season. He was up front a lot, but couldn't secure a championship. And here we go again. Nine versus 48. laps coming to a close all this means is more give and let more take and less give on board the nine he's got the 22 behind him they're pushing strong not making contact here comes the nine he's gonna try to take it on the high side up high with his teammate two to one 
Frost is going to try to catch up. He's going to try to use the one of Beloved to try to get up to him. Dale Jr. is still in the mix. There is the 9. 48 doing everything he can. 9 is your new leader. 48 trying to hold her down. Rubbing doors. There's the 22 on the bottom. Exciting side-by-side -side racing. 48. 9 has help. 48 does not at this moment. rubbing doors nine's got an edge but he's on that high side it's going to be difficult for him to take the lead and pull the 22 with him but it seems like the 48 does not have help right now habibi retakes the lead with a side draft now the nine gets it back side by side nine at the line habibi separates the 22 and the nine was that a good idea though now the nine is back in control. He is back your race leader, blocking the 48. Tough racing, you see the contact being made. 48, contact, 22, contact. One thing the 48 did that he needed to do, separate those teammates. Keep them from working together. Make it just about the 48 and the 9 because he knows he's going to have to have enough separation so that when he makes his move later on in the race, the 9 cannot rely on his teammate to help him out. He's going to have to do it all on his own. Now, the question, will the 23, will the 1, will the 88 be able to get back into this race? They can with another caution. But will they be able to drive back up to the front? Right now, the 18 holding the 88 up with a lot of trouble holding his line. It's really been a three-car race right here. Reminds us a lot of the, of the BRL 500 last season, where it was the 8, the 09, excuse me, yeah, the... Um, well, no, the night race last season, the BRL uh, crowns a champ. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot which race that was exactly. But it was in the final round, the Daytona of the final round, where it was Paint, Sam Cook, and um, well, it wasn't Paint. It was the it was it was Ghost, Sam Cook and Habibi. But anyway, and I got that out. Wow. Back in black, back in control. He has led the most laps in this race. So kudos to him and another bonus point to add to his total. Well, what matters most, the win. And we saw earlier the nine get into some trouble. Able to drive back up through the field. But the thing about Daytona is these laps count down. We're on lap 71 of 100 with possible overtime laps if we need them. Here's the thing. Every time you spin, there's a chance of a DNF. Every time you get turned, there's a chance of a DNF. These guys are racing really hard as you would expect them to. This is what they, whoa, contact. Nine, 22 comes down and turns the nine again. Nine into the wall. Cautions, oh, and he gets hit and that's it. DNF for the nine car. You saw that there on your screen. Just like the eight car, the nine gets out and the 45 is out too. And as we were talking about him, the chances of an opportunity to go to championship or championship victory lane, to go to victory lane here at Daytona are squashed with that DNF. And very upsetting run for the nine. I know he was uh, looking forward to um, up there battling hard battling aggressive for the 500 the 22 was the one that turned him and um, so let's see Michael and what damage he got from that race uh, from that wreck as we see no damage there Wow That's just how quick things can turn here at Daytona at a, at a plate race and, and as the laps close. 
very, very, uh, very, very disappointing situation. And uh, let's see if we can uh, talk to a few of the drivers that uh, were involved in that wreck. Um, let's talk first to Woozy, um, who uh, was was DNF'd out of that, so unfortunately, and. I believe pit road will probably be open this time by we have woozy emu who was just checked out of uh the infield care center and uh you get a chance to talk to him woozy hey. you were having such a good run what happened uh so i did saw uh see it coming then i definitely got wrecked by someone else yeah we saw you slam head on into the 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 nine of back in black and that, that dnf your car man i'm so sorry you were having such a great run uh what's it feel like though to be back in the league bro hey it feel amazing um all the drivers are pretty friendly and and so do you sam cook well we you're appreciate a, a, having you're a an amazing driver and a owner of the league well, thank you very much. Uh, I it makes me happy when other people are happy and having fun. But I uh, be uh, be in the booth with you. Oh uh, well, I I don't see why not. You can definitely be up here in the booth with me. I don't see why not. Okay. Let's um. <laughs> let me uh. On the next caution, if we have one, we'll invite up here the nine of back in black and see get an interview with him. Uh, but right now, let's get ready for this restart right. here. Um, Habibi on the front row. Now, this is going to change the game quite a bit because we know the 9 and, and the 22 were working really, really well together. Now, all of a sudden, the 48 has the 23 of Frosty right here with him. Yep. But the 22 is by himself. We'll see what, what he decides to do, how he decides to improvise who he pulls with him up to the front. Also, we saw Josh again struggle after that restart. So here's another question. Will Josh be a player in this game? Will he be able to fix those issues with his car? Did he fix them on his last, on that past uh, caution? We're about to see pace car speeds off into pit road. Mm -hmm. And, and coming to, to the line. Back green flag race. Is green flag on the way at Daytona. As Woozy said, we're back green again, and here's a 48-23 drops in line with him. Beloved sitting third. He hasn't maintained that spot now. No time to give up spots. Dale Jr. is going to go around being pushed by the 22, so it looks like he's found a new partner being pushed, and that's Dale Jr. capitalizing. Beloved going to have to step up he's going to continue to be competitive 18 sits last right now yeah uh, if the love and George need to keep it up they need to work together look at Dell jr. on the high side in the 88 being pushed by the 22 he got a run has to fall back in line this is a very draft dependent package he did not have the help that he needed so that's a failed attempt but he puts those that front group on notice. I am not afraid to step out there and make a move. And that's exactly what we see going on on board with Dale Jr. Uh, Nancy to get up to the front. Last time he was in some competitive racing was years, literal years ago. Here he is back again and back being competitive. He doesn't have to worry about a bumper glitch at all. He can go full sin and he's in line with the 23. And he moves the 23. Oh. The 88 of Dale Jr. moving the 23 out of the groove. Dale Jr. is going to take second. Oh, Dale Jr. have an advantage. Now what's he going to do? Michael pushing him. The 88 of Dale having a great run in his debut of BRL. Pushing the 48. Now he's going to have to be careful oh. here, though, because, oh, Dale's too low. Oh, Dale Jr. is going to give that spot back. Dale Jr. have a little loose. So 
Dale's gonna have to try to get that spot big. No back, no harm, no foul. He didn't spin out, but now he's on an island by himself. He's gonna have to hope that the one in the 18 will be enough to get him back up there. Let's get back up to the front. Michael in the 22. Now he's gonna have to catch with Habibi. For some reason, the 23 of Frosty has had a lot of trouble staying close to uh, his partner, you would say not teammate necessarily, but partner in the 48. There goes the 22. Now expect the 48 to be every bit as aggressive with him as he was with the nine to prevent the rookie from taking the lead, lead and possibly the win as these laps count down. We're coming up to 20 to go here, 10, 20 to go here very, very soon. Beloved and the one trying to team up. Beloved in the 88, rather, trying to team up. Now there's the contact, 22 making it known. I am not working with you. He's gonna try to pass on the high side. It's just these two right here. So who's going to have the better advantage? Will the 22 of Michael and that ECE Chevrolet take the lead? 48 is blocking, blocking. Doing a good job of anticipating where the 22 is gonna go. I'm thinking the 22 are going to make it the high side and make it pass with the 48. Yeah, going to try to cross the 48 up because if not, then it's just going to be the, the single foul kind of, kind of thing. You got to get the 48 off balance and then getting them off balance is going to create a situation where you'll be able to punch yourself into a hole possibly that may cause the 22 or the 48 to get loose, spin, or at least you're able to drive by and get the lead. We'll see. Yep. Getting that run, staying close to the drive, draft, diving it down to the inside. I think in Michael and Lou Heavy is a competitive driver throughout BOL or KMR, just saying. But they're very good at Daytona. I agree 100%. We've seen the full range of spectrum with people like Beloved being very, very passive. And then the people like the 48 and the nine of Back in Black being very, very aggressive. Yeah, don't forget the full spectrum. Too. And you're exactly right, kind of in the middle there. So while this battle is going on, we'll keep track of that via the map. Let's go back here to the, the back half of the field, if you will. There's the one of Beloved, Dale Jr., Frosty. They're all trying to get back up to the field, through the field. As we pull up our race info map. And there you see the distance between them oh, and the leaders. Bob Dane did send the measure to me. He said he uh, have Sam seen the nine is it happy. Well, we'll leave that out of the stream right now. Uh, focus on the racing right now. I am sure the nine is not happy, but who would be happy after what happened in that wreck? Back up to the front here. Let's um, we're gonna keep our map up for now so that we can keep an eye on this pack back here and what may happen oh, to 48 them. Back. 48 is spun. 48 is turned by the 22 into the wall. Endangering the field, Ooh, Kashin is going to fly. Caught in and out. An obvious damage to the 48. Oh, Lou Hibby is not too happy about that. Yes, it wouldn't be happy and this gives the 22 the lead. So you have to know the 48 is not going to play nice when he gets back up there on 82 of 100. It does say 115 on your screen. That's overtime in case those laps are needed. And the way it's going right now, it's probably going to be needed. I'm <laughs> just, just <laughs> saying it's probably going to be needed yeah. right now. 
let's do this. Let's pull in um, a release from our infield care center. Let's see if he's released from that infield care center. And um, a wreck from a while ago that ended his awesome run up to that point. This pit road will probably be open back in black. Driver of the 9 ECE Chevrolet in the garage early. Uh, just remember that you are, we are being, we are broadcasting right now. I understand noticeably you are frustrated. What happened out there? You need to start this turn right and just kill, kill me. That's all right. I got my teammate out there. I told him I said go big or go home. Doesn't matter who you're in the way. And he just went big. We saw that on our screen, man. We apologize. You were having such a great run up until that point. How was the car? Well, you can really see strong. from y'all's stream that we wasn't tanning and we was just in the bubble. So, we uh, done pretty good. The car was awesome. My car was like a full machine. Like, I can just pull away from my teammate. My car was just so fast with the, the new team we got. So, we come back here in the day race. I don't think there's nobody going to stop me in the 22 from winning it. A lot of confidence from the nine of back in black and we're sorry to see what happened but like you said your teammate is out there hopefully he can do it as a lapse countdown we're approaching 10 to go man mm -hmm. uh, who you like to thank I'd like to thank uh, nationwide Budweiser, uh cat caterpillar uh safe life dupont uh mountain dew they'll be on the car for the week when we come back uh, and uh, all my other sponsors, uh, BRL for uh, sponsoring my car also because I have a sponsor on there for them. So uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, for sure. Also, be a, a but I'm so sorry about liking you. Oh no, you didn't break me. You broke my teammate. Oh, he's mad. Yeah. Oh, my teammate is mad. <laughs> so y'all might want to watch this last team and get him in forty-eight. All right. Well. We appreciate you coming up here doing this interview, man. And uh, we got you. we'll get you out of here as we get ready to go green flag racing. Yeah, pay for it coming in. But this restart. Yep. Yeah. And here we go. Red flag on the way. Green, green, green. We're back underway. Dell Jr. We're on board with him. Can he get a? A second chance at redemption being pushed by the 48. Beloved tight slams into the wall, kills his momentum. Beloved back up to second place in that 88. Now has he learned his mistakes? Last time he got a bit too antsy when he got up here almost to the lead this time. What will he do? Stay giving a good birth to that double yellow. That's a smart move. In the meantime, the 48, something to keep an eye on. He's back with Frosty. Now, will Frosty be able to provide some assistance with him? Hadn't been able to do it all race. Will he be able to accomplish that this time? Let's keep a close eye on that as we tick the laps down. How many laps you got on your screen, uh, Woozy? 85. 85. Laps out of a hundred. And I was wondering if you Hubi and Foxy keep working together to keep the draft, they probably will get into first and second. What do you think? They could, but the thing is they're gonna have to they're gonna have to get past that twenty two. So the same thing that the 48 was doing, I imagine the 22 is going to do. And then you're going to have this this player, this this uh, ace in the hole here in the, in the 88. He's going to go with whoever's going to bring him to the lead. He's not loyal to anybody. So that's going to be another player that wasn't there before. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. And then don't forget about the one of Beloved. He's tagging along with this group right now. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. Here comes the 48. He's going to go high on the 88. 
He's going to go around him. What's the 88 going to do? Stay there on the bottom, work with Michael. No, the 48 is going to dive back inside. I don't think he's going to get the run. Now he's going to go back high. And then where fought the 48 high, side by side, side drafting, making contact. 22 goes up to block. 48's going to come down, chop the nose of the 88, squeezes in line. Now that leaves the 23 out to drive. I will he be able to hang on? I was saying they were foggy, uh, not drafting with Lou in the 48. No, he's not. And that Toyota has not been able to keep up with that field of Chevys the entire race. He has struggled. So let's see what um what happens here as dale jr starts to lose just a little bit of steam from his earlier move back up front 22 and 48 will that be the new battle we know last season it was 84 48 this season or at least to start is 22 the rookie leading the 500 Will he score his first win in his first ever race, official race in BRL? Dale Jr. in the mix, the longtime vet. We're on lap 88, 12 to go. Mm -hmm. Well, probably 12 to go now because we got to run lap 100. But anyway. Dale doing everything he can to push the 48 back up to the 22 who has no help problem when they catch that momentum the 22 blocks Dale's gonna go low Dale goes low the 48 switches and that's one thing the 40 is not allowing Dale to take that spot away Dale's doing everything he can Forty-eight, eighty-eight, twenty-two. There is the eighty-eight again. They have to be careful. They're gonna spin each other. Yeah, that probably be a problem then. Making a little bit of contact. Bump drafting is allowed. You just can't lock bumpers. 88's got to be able to hold that line, though. Frosty off the pace. Now you see Dale, how much momentum he lost, and as a result, the gap that is there. 10 to go. Ten laps remaining in the 500. The 22 is pulled away from the field so far because the 88 and the 48 can't keep it together. Now here's the push. Remember three to go, you can lock bumpers. Who's gonna lock with the 22? Right now leading all the laps that they can. There's the 88, trying to push the 48. They're catching the 22. ADA of Dale Jr. giving all his momentum, all he got. He sure is, Woozy. Down the back stretch they go. Nine to go in this race. There they go on the high side. Eight left to go. Oh, there he goes. Ooh, 
close one. Got a little loose from the contact from Dale. And now they're pushing when you see contact. You can bump, you just can't lock. They are okay. Dale's got to hold his line, though, if he is going to make a push at all. The 22 holding his own despite not having a teammate. The rookie with the laps counting down is looking in his rear view. What are his thoughts? 48. Getting that momentum, getting that run. Oh. 22, is he gonna block? No, he goes oh. low. Little bit of side draft. Side by side, here we go. Now the 88 has a choice. Do I go with the 48? Do I go with the 22? He goes with the 48. 22 is all alone. And there is no help behind him. 48 to the race lead. And Here in the closing laps of Daytona. They make contact. Here comes the 88. The three battling hard for the win. Oh, 48 blocking, blocking aggressively. Trying to keep that 22 behind him. 88 losing the draft. And the 88, what he, what does he want to see? The aggressive blocking. He wants to see the swerving. He wants to see them going back and forth. He wants to see them not drafting because this gives them the best opportunity. 22 low. We're on lap 96, right, Woozy? I seem to have lost my partner in crime. Oh, oh I'm in here. Sorry. Yeah, what what lap are we on? I believe it's uh, 96, yep, right? 96. We're on lap 96. Dale Jr. out of the equation. Yeah. So it's 22 versus 48. Remember. Two to go or, or white flag, no more cautions. So we have up to two to go. Um, also, I'm so sorry. I was looking at the antigram. That's fine, that's fine. 97 of 100. Or of 101. Officially, it's 101 because the first lap was burned off for a pace lap. Look at the 22 trying to squeeze in there on the high side. 48's gonna block. Pulling out all of the stops to try to keep the 22 behind him. Here we approach lap 98 of 101. And right now you don't lift no matter what. You don't lift. You just, you're not lifting. The 22 is not going to lift. He's not going to check up to keep from wrecking the 48. 48's not going to stop blocking. This is the 500. This is what it's for. This is what, this is, this is what it's all about right here. Mm -hmm. Michael looking at that run up high. 48 trying to pinch. Doing a good job of making those bumpers as wide as the racetrack. Wow, did it entertainment. Here we approach lap 99 of 101. The bumper lock starts now, but there's drivers scattered throughout the track. It doesn't matter. All focus is on this right here. Oh, 22 no! versus 48. Oh, and the 48 is turned. The 48 is turned hard and into the wall he goes. That might be a DNF for him. It's not. He is okay, but that definitely will be a caution. Caution's going to come out, and that's going to make things interesting. Dies. The caution flag will fly. We'll probably get the field together here. 
laps, which means that that'll be lap 100, lap 101. So we're going into overtime. Pit road will remain closed. And um, you have to know everyone here is going to pit. Pit road is going to remain closed until lap 101. Lap 100 right here. They're going to catch up to the pace car. Lap 101, they're going to pass. Lap 102 is when pit road will be open. We officially are going into overtime. And all the drivers are slowing down for the pace car. So, Sam, who do you pick for the race? For the BR 500? Man, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know who to pick. Um, to be honest, um, I, I don't know. The 22 looks very, very strong. The 48 looks very, very strong. But I'm gonna tell you who's gonna change the game for for this for this race. The 88 of Dale Jr. If the 88 of Dale Jr. is is in this mix here, I think anything could happen, and I think Dale could pull this off. He's gonna have to play it smart. He's gonna have to take any gap that he can get. But I think he can do. It. I think he can do it. Yeah. Pit world will remain closed this lap. Uh, or it should have been closed this lap. Yeah, you should have said that because some of the drivers are going to pit road. Well, that's fine. That's fine. They just they weren't watching the stream. That's okay. <laughs> well, they probably learned their lesson by now. All right. So basically green white checker they will go green on lap 103 and they will go around take the with the green flag any cautions that come out will extend the overtime if they take the white flag no more My cautions friend. frosty who you got I mean, Frosty, <laughs> wow, Woozy. The only reason I say that is because uh, Frosty pulled up on, this, on my screen, so. Wow. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Woozy, who you got? Uh, who you think's going to win Well, you said Frosty, so I'd go with Frosty. Okay. Tell me why you're going with Frosty. Well, he had a good pace, and he followed the line very carefully. I think he made a... Purple line to make and make to the win. All right. Well, let's go through the field real quick since we have some time. Not going green to lap 103. So uh, let's look at the field. Dale Jr. sits on the pole right now. He sits in first place. He's a control car. Important for him to get a good restart. He has to get a good restart. He could be a big player in this. He only has three laps. Just defend it for two laps. Third lap is checker flag, but you can do this. Been a long time since you've seen Dale Jr. up front. Let's go to second place. And you said Frosty. Yep. Frosty's in an excellent position to steal this thing. Hadn't had the most power when it comes to pushing, but when he's being pushed, that's the big question. Remember, you can lock bumpers. Who's going to do it with him to be able to get him up to the front and his first BRL series win? Beloved's in third place. Excellent opportunity for Beloved to strike goal right here. He's got to do something to get past his first group. He, too many times he's had the opportunity and given it away. Now is not one of those times. He has to be aggressive, stay in the throttle. He could bring CMR to first race of the year, yep. first win of the year, and his first career BRL win. Let's go to Michael. Really strong race so far. Uh, got tangled with the 48, got tangled with the 9, got tangled in some of the other wrecks. What is he going to be able to accomplish here in this one? Will he be the first rookie to get a win this season in BRL? Habibi. 
frustrating that he got spun, but we know how powerful his car is and his ability to get up through the field in a hurry. We've seen it countless times. He's not out of it yet. Let's see what he's able to do. Josh, the best game, our in-race reporter. We only got to check with, chat with him one time. He said he was struggling with the handling of that car, and indeed, that has been the case. He sits last on the grid, but it's not over. Miracles do happen. He takes the white flag. Everybody wrecks. He doesn't. He could steal this win. It's not over. Who is going to win the Paintbrush Paints Tribute BRL 500 here at Daytona under the lights? That's why I chose the lights, because it puts on a show. Six cars remain in the field of 13. And Pace Who's going to take the in. victory? And Tighten those belts one last time. We're going green flag. There's Habibi trying to inch up the middle. Ooh. Contact in the back and go, they're spinning go, go. 48s around again. Several cars in the caution. Oh, and bringing out this pace car. Okay. That looks like Beloved. It is Beloved. A lot of damage to the rear of that car. I guess we're going into overtime again. Uh, yes, we are. Another overtime. Habibi catching up to the field as well. And you pet Dale Jr. and you made the one choice because he's in the lead. All right, so pit road will be open this time. Let's see who are takers. Now, if you're Dale, you don't pit. If you're anybody on the track that was not involved in that wreck, you bet not pit. Even though it's a six car field, you have to think. <laughs> you have to think, are you gonna be able to get through the field quickly? Look at the big movers. Michael goes from in the back to third. Oh, so one car going in. Let's see what happens. Oh, that might be Beloved. Beloved, yeah. Well. Wait, I do realize, while Bane is doing my own uh, stuff in, on his car. Really? Yeah. I just made a BRL and he just put it in his safety car. Well, safety car. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right, Dale Jr., I know his heart is beating out of his chest right now. It's been such a long time since we've seen Dale Jr. in a league. It's been a really, really long time. An eon of time since we've seen Dale Jr. up front in a big race. His last win in any K uh, Sam Cook led league was in KMR, <laughs> early seasons of KMR at Las Vegas when he pulls out a win on fuel mileage. Can he pull out a win on skill? Here at Daytona, the biggest stage. It's a green white checkered overtime number two. Dale Jr., Frosty, Michael, Josh, the best game moves up to fourth, and the 48 of a BB fifth. Who's going to take home win number one of BRL season three? Hmm. Well, dang, and our, is our pace car as. That Acura I, prepares to oh, dive it down pit road. Going in. Speeding off in the pit road is the Acura. Here we go. Here comes the wheel zone. And here we go. We're going on the way. Green flags in the air. Look at the beloved making it three wide. Back side by two by two. Dale Jr. trying to hold that line. Michael being pushed by the 48. Dale There's Jr. Frosty in the mix. Dale Jr. doing the main job of holding his line very carefully. 
got to do something. There is Michael getting ready to make a move on the bottom. Dale comes down the block. Oh. Can they get to the white flag without a caution? We're going to find out. <laughs> Yes, we are. Look at Beloved making moves on the inside in that CMR Chevrolet. Oh! White flags in the air. No more cautions and Dale's oh. in the grass. Oh. He Dale saves here. it. Dale saves it but loses the lead. And little Habibi takes over. Oh my goodness, the mistake you can't make. Look at Beloved. Beloved trying to hang on. He's in third. Trying to block. Habibi two more corners before he can bring home the 500. Michael trying to challenge. Can he have enough power in that ECE Chevy? Coming down to the flag stand. The 48 and the winner of 484 is. racing. Habibi wins the BRL 500. What an exciting finish and in this race. And the second Michael and third and Fofty. I guess we can pull, uh, pull the winner into the booth. But if... Not yet. All the drivers pull to the bottom so that we can get the running order, which I'm sure will be given to me. But again, the 48 strikes gold. Not a lot of happy drivers at the end of this, mm -hmm. but that's what happens in a race like this sometimes. Yeah, you're As uh, the drivers circle around, and uh, we're going to get running orders here. Yeah, right. Uh, not for the rest a of this race. Happy, happy racer at Daytona. Well, that's typically what happens at Daytona, is you get times like that where you get finishes that uh, are quote unquote controversial but um, it happens like that I believe Dale Jr. finished fourth I'm about to get the running order as soon as they pour as soon as they park yeah, I'll get the uh, running Dale order Jr. so hopefully park. someone's watching and uh let's send a message real quick go for it Hopefully they got it. And my old family. All right, so I'm going to mark uh, the 88 as fourth because that's where he's parked at. Yeah, Louis will be in the 48 doing burnout. And then uh, Beloved in the one. What a good run. And then Josh, the 18 there. Yeah, Josh. Get uh, what a great off. run for him. And then, of course, we've got to add the two. Um, I will explain that later. DNFs, the 9, the 45, the 8. Yeah, my um, one. Who else, uh, who else DNF? There was another one that DNF too. Oh, uh, I think Bibbly Bob. Yes, Bob. Uh, yeah, what number was he? He was the 18, right? Or just was he the 70 something? Uh, I didn't check it. I'll get his number. Yeah, I didn't check yeah, it, I'll Bubba. Get his number. Most laps led went to the nine. But everyone that uh, had... Oh, God. Beloved is flipping. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> All right. Well, let's invite in... Uh, let's get some interviews in really quickly. And we'll start with uh, the 23 of Frosty. Let's uh, see about getting him in here and getting some interviews with him. Yeah. Could I uh, do the What a race. Could I do the interview with him? You sure can do the interview with him. Okay. I have no problems with that. I thought he was appearing online. Uh, but... He was offline. But yes. I can give him an invite. I just sent him an invite. What a race. What a yeah, race. Yeah, that was a mean race. Yeah, I sent him another one. And here it comes. Yep. Hello, Fox. Did it, Take it away. Uh, did the movie ammo and the BR booth do copy? I got you, bro. Hey, man, you do a mean job. 
Third place, amazing job. How do you feel you in the Daytona and being in the BRO 500? Feels really great, you know. A season ago, we were running this race leading with paintbrush, and unfortunate circumstances made us miss the top ten. So, to come back this season and have an extraordinary result makes me so happy for myself and my team. Uh, I really feel for back in black and and you, Woozy, for getting a DNF there, but it was it was a tight race overall, and I'm really proud of Habibi. He stood hard and he won that race the way he should have, and we were able to get a really good finish, too, so I'm proud of them. Yeah, um, second off, how do you feel we're heading to, uh, well, the landing for upcoming races if, uh, uh, yeah, upcoming races? Personally, I am really bad at that track, so I'm probably going to end up DNFing, but for the sake of the league itself, I heard a lot of comments and I saw a lot of racing that I did not like out of a very certain individual and I'm just kind of hoping and praying that that certain individual doesn't come back and do what he did again because I know a lot of people were upset and <laughs> I wouldn't want to see this this type of series go down that route because I, I was very distrusted with how one of the drivers <laughs> raced me personally and I just I hope it's a clean race I want it to be a clean race you know I love this league I love the people in it you know I had that big old I love Sam sticker <laughs> but yeah I'm really <laughs> looking forward to the race um, just really proud of my team you know two seasons ago I was sitting in a booth with my little squeaky boys talking about the race and y'all's perspective you would have came here and told me that I was able to get a top three in the freaking 500 and that's insane yeah really hey Nobody care about Clicky Boy. You're amazing, man. You're you're an amazing and the uh, and Neither way. My name is Xavier Welcome to the Blitz Racing. <laughs> <laughs> I know you miss it. Hey, Frosty, um, I do have a quick question before we uh, ask you who you got to think. So now I got two questions. Number first question though was we noticed throughout that race um, when you were pushing Habibi. Uh, you had a little bit of issue with when Habibi would get hooked up with the 9 and a 22. Uh, you had a little bit of issue staying up with them. Do you think that was more so um, draft, the air, as far as your car, or was it something else? Personally, I think it varied. The tune, I don't really know what it was, to be honest with you, in full honesty. In my personal opinion, I thought it was a tune because I had the 88 of Dale right on my bumper pushing it perfect and when I got to the guys in front of me it just wouldn't stick but I know that the 9 and the 22 were lock drafting really hefty there early so that could have been a factor and I hope that gets reviewed but I think the real answer to your question would be that tune for me I guess because I, I have my foot in it the whole time and it just wouldn't stick so I don't know case of unfortunate events good to salvage a finish out of that though yeah, man, if you don't mind, just run the rest of them laps out and save that footage. We can go back, save it, and we can go back because I DNF and had to broadcast. So we can go back and look at that early and, and uh, take care of that. I'll get you covered. Appreciate it, man. Who you got to thank? Oh, uh, man, a lot of people. Firstly, you. You let me run into the series last season as a rookie. Stupid rookie. I DNF'd every week. <laughs> But for you giving me the opportunity to be able to show up in this league and raise my heart out means the world. Um, Phil yeah. Habibi especially because, you know, when everybody was just pulling away and giving me a big fat middle finger in that race, <laughs> Habibi sat there and he stuck with me and, and he helped me push him and he really helped salvage my race. But there's a lot of people. I know Woozy who helped me get into league race and my family for letting me stay up at 2 in the morning and just at all the parties involved. It, it means a lot. And, you know, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get hey, this opportunity uh, again to run as well as I did. I'm just, I'm uh, grateful. Hey, Fati, hey, uh, you're welcome, man. Uh, anything to do to your team, the league, and even for Sam Cook. Thank you, Sam, for letting me be in the BRL. You're an amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You guys make with the league fun. Uh, I, I'm not going to race 100 laps by myself, so I appreciate you guys coming in and being willing to follow the rules and hey, make everything man, fun. And, uh, and enjoy. Yeah, let, let me get some more interviews in. Uh, so we, we appreciate having you in the booth, man, and we'll get you out of here on that one. All right, thanks for it. I need to go to the bathroom badly, so <laughs> I'm going to go do my work. Have a good night, you guys. All right. God bless y'all. Hey, too, good night, Fati. I will see you today.
Good night, brother. All right. So we're going to invite now in a Michael. We're going to pull Michael in. He got second in this uh, this race. And, hey, I, uh, I want you to take an interview. Okay. I will definitely take it. And uh, we'll get him. Oh, God. Someone died across the screen <laughs> just then. Okay. That is well, weird. Michael finished second place. Our... Our rookie in BRL, man, you had an exciting run. You led early, or you and your teammate were there together, and then um, your teammate got taken out, and then you led some, and then you came up a bit short. Just describe those last couple laps. Dale Door banged me three times, now on the back stretch. So I figure if he wants to race me to where he's beating and banging on me, I'm not going to lift for him on the inside. And it's the end of the race. And this turned him because he couldn't control it. And everybody's mad about it. Yeah, we uh, we saw a lot of uh, wrecks throughout that race, especially late in the race. Um, one thing about it, though, is the laps count down. The amount of give that you get to other people goes down as well and then toward the end it's all take uh how would you describe your car you look really strong and at one point you were pulling on drivers that were drafting i mean take, take us through that how strong was that car tonight second fastest by far first fastest is back in black and he gets taken out yep that happens at plates, that happens at plate tracks. We understand that. So with that mindset, you got a really good finish. What do you think about your chances coming into uh, Road Atlanta in a couple weeks? What are your thoughts going into that race? Daytona didn't matter. It's an oval super speedway. It's not the same as a road course. We have to actually break. That's true. Spoken from our rookie, a lot of uh, a lot of people got their eyes on you coming into that race. We'll see what you got, man. Who you got to thank? Back to black, taking out in a teammate. BRL for putting on the show and letting us race. And all right, sponsors man. on the phone. BRL. All right, big dog. Welcome to BRL. We look forward to seeing you at Road Atlanta in a couple weeks. We'll be winning something soon. I heard that. He's putting the league on notice. He will be winning something soon. But will he win more than this guy? Let's talk to our race winner, the guy that has won and continues to win everything but a championship. <laughs> Let's get him in here. Little Habibi. You did it right in that Ally 48. <laughs> you won the 500? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you. How's it feel, I'm man? Enough. All these guys on the 404 racing, my sponsor, Ally, for being on for all three seasons. You know, it's good to finally win this race after it's kicked our butt the past two seasons, or even at Indy. And uh, yeah, Can't, you know, we stole it there at the end, but we've had it taken away from us many times too, so it still feels good. Yeah, man, take us through the last couple laps, because especially after, um, especially after we lost um, Back in Black, and then of course, um, a few others, I mean, it just seemed like it was tough to kind of hold your own with Back in Black and and Michael. And then with Michael by himself, even when you had um, Michael by himself, you were trying to work with the 23 and it just didn't seem like that package was working out. Take us through how you were able to battle through some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh use my rear bumper there blocking the best I can um, really didn't know why they, their cars were closing up really quick compared to 23s and even when I got behind them but you know I guess they were just able to manage there better but you know it was pretty tough um, especially going into this race without my teammate 
know I had to like be on my own, but thankfully we did have the 23 and the 88, we were there to help, but yeah, just uh, did my blocking and did what I could do there. Didn't work out a few times, but still found my way to get back there at the end. Definitely, man. So you're in through the next round, you got that first win out of the way. Um, you won a lot last season wasn't able to steal that championship so does your mentality change this season is winning the races these races still really important or is your focus still in sight still set on winning the championship you know i think we just got to repeat what we did last season of course i still want to go in there and win as much as i can i feel like that confidence boost alone is a good is should well how do i say this helps me a lot and you know going for this championship but you know last season the last round we just you know ran into uh we had daytona <laughs> daytona i think really was the uh factor that put me in that hole that you know led me to the dnfs that followed after but you know my mentality is just gonna still go win these races and then when we get to that final four round we'll just uh hope our luck doesn't eat us at daytona if it's still in the last round i don't know yeah, it's in the last round. No, First race so, in the last round. Let's yeah. hope it doesn't, you know, yeah. <laughs> eat us up this time. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I think you thanked everybody already, so we'll get you out of here. Congratulations on winning the 500 and uh, doing LI right. <laughs> yeah. Doing it right just tonight. Guys, that's been the coverage of the, the Paintbrush Paints Tribute. BRL 500. Want to thank everyone who tuned in. We almost didn't have a broadcast, but you can thank um, whoever was turned around facing me in the middle of the racetrack um, <laughs> during the early laps of Daytona for that one. Now we got a broadcast. We want to thank everyone who's made this possible, um, and thank all the drivers who come in every week and run with us. We will not have a race next weekend. We will not have a race the weekend after that, but we will have a race. In two weeks or three weeks, we'll be in Road Atlanta for the Twitch Monster. I think it's 150 in Road Atlanta. Thank you, Woozy, for being up here in the booth. Hey, this is Sam welcome. Cook, Twitch Mon What'd you say? I'm sorry. Uh, I said, uh, you're welcome. So we know what you. No problem, man. This is Twitch Sam Cook here at Twitch Monster 27. Signing out.